Let's try that again. Ugh. We'll say that I never had this many problems with the old machine. I think it's because QuickTime was screwing it up, but I tried this yesterday and it worked great. New movie recording. Yes. There it is. All right. Now we should be working. iPad, iPad. Okay, great. Okay. Let's try this again. My audio levels are good. That looks better. <laughs> Some bassoons here. going let's keep writing stuff I think we're gonna grab this main theme and do it low This has been Pit, so we need to make it Arco. This is probably not super realistic. We probably need to cut out measure 21 in the Shelly, I would imagine. Let's copy that on the base. Um. Let's actually copy it into a little brass as well. Maybe, um, tuba? Oh. Tuba, though. We definitely don't need an arco marking in our face because it's already arco. <laughs> Like, wait a beat, do like a four, that's five, something like this, maybe. Actually, let's try to be piano. I'm trying to think of some other things we could do here with this D sharp. Um, it's really an E flat. We could do it in like an E flat chord and see what it. Well, except that there's then a B. It has to kind of be B, which is what I've been doing. Make sure that's 
sure this is major. <laughs> This is a C, it's very sweet. Um, B. Sort of has this natural movement upward in the upper strings, so let's go up one more. So that's E minor. We could just go up, I think. Yeah, just just to just to F. Yeah. <laughs> I think what will make this work is um, just careful shaping of dynamics. Um, if we had sort of a natural Maybe crescendo up to here. Let me do a mezzo forte. And really it should go on the actual pitch here. Maybe across these two bars. Oops. Just copy that. And then a natural decrescendo to here. So maybe piano here, something like that. Oh. Is there a beat off? Like, can you imagine how long this would have taken to program in a DAW? I, would have had to, I, I do separate out all my string instruments, so this would have taken forever. Yeah, it's got a nice ring to it. We could double these chords on something. Maybe winds. Mm, yeah, maybe like uh like all three flutes here. I just want to hear what it sounds like in isolation first. Not sure these are the right volume. It's way too loud. That's why you listen to them first.
do some time signature stuff here. Let's go back to this alto flute that we began with. Get some, I want to have something kind of Lydian here, I think. Can use the harps again to really outline our, our three fourness. Just some vague chordal work here. Well, we don't go to F till over here. So I actually want two measures of that and only and one measure of this without the Back to here, maybe. Change in texture, same idea. Something maybe a little chromatic. What's up, Justin Tangled? This is gonna be a little dissonant, I think. So we're gonna get this A and G sharp. Oops, please don't do that. I don't want it besides make those. Okay, so then that's okay. That's not gonna work. That a little chromatic line here might be nice, but 
I don't think it's going to work. What if it were, um, kind of like horns? And then it kept going here, maybe it did something like that. I like that actually the I kind of like the parallel force that gives it kind of a weird feeling. A little syncopation here. So that C will hang out for those and then it can go up to maybe actually it could go down. We could have a nice Something like that. I'm not sure I love some of this, but we're going to smooth it out here. Oop. Go away. Everything except for this B. This B I hate, but we could do like this. Have it even more syncopated. And this should maybe be a little, let's have a little tempo change here too. Maybe a little slower. Maybe down to like 72-ish. Let's try it, yeah. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Let's try that. So it's like, it's a moment of slowness. Yeah, that's nice. Listen to the whole thing.
Okay. I do like the slowness there, but what we're going to do is we're going to have it... There's an opportunity for it to actually sort of organically slow down before that. Okay. Um, into this, maybe. So what we'll do is we'll, we'll put a... Maybe a 90 here. And we'll put uh, where we want it to end up here. Let's try 75, and we'll just make it... Sort of slow down through this um at least some like bell like thing to be happening here maybe maybe some chelasta. Helps if you uh, write notes that exist. Oh, come on. See, sometimes the handwriting recognition. Come on. Sometimes you have to play with the handwriting recognition to make it work. But you learn those tricks pretty fast, in my experience. Oops. Let's have it. Let go up. Because that word switches to F. It's not going like that. See what I mean? Yeah. It's time to go down, actually. Again, we want to have some kind of Just a little bit dissonant, not hugely. Not more of that, please. Where'd it go? Okay, whatever. Um, we're just gonna copy it anyway. Uh, although this time we're gonna do it an octave lower. With the, with the clarinet. All right. Hey, Carson. How's it going? Ah, we're, uh, we're a measure off here. I have for Halo season two, that's funny. Actually behind. I saw they have Bear McCreary doing the music now, that was interesting. I really liked uh Sean Callery's music for it. I'm sure Bear McCreary will do a great job too though.
yeah, I'm not, I'm not, yeah. I'm, I'm, also, doesn't Bear McCreary have like a Hans Zimmer style, like little company where he can have his name be on something, but it'd be a bunch of other people, which that's not judgment, just checking. I thought he had like a thing like that. So maybe it has his name on it. I don't know. I, I honestly, I haven't been paying attention. Okay. I think we need to have this theme be in, be a big lush string thing. Big lush string thing. Maybe an MF. We're gonna do something, we're gonna do a different chord over there. Let's um get the chords in. I think MP was probably a perfectly sensible place to have that. All right, let's do cello. This kind of thing. That MP. See if it'll let me draw a mezzo piano here or not. One of the biggest problems I find with staff pad is it's really hard to write dynamics if anything goes below the staff. We might make this a E major here. I'm not sure. And I was thinking here. I have an idea. Let's try this. I'm, just, I'm demoing it here. This chord voicing might stay or it might not. I can't decide. I just want to see what it sounds like to go to an A major there. Oops. Love writing in uh, tenor or uh, alto clef. It's so fun. It's my favorite thing. I followed this guy on Twitter and uh, he made a funny joke. It was like, uh, um, what was it? Uh, it was about uh, that Maestro movie. Uh, and, uh, Bradley Cooper spent six years learning to conduct the Mahler scene. And the guy's comment was, he spent five of the six years were spent learning to read alto clef, so he could do, conduct the viola. It's pretty funny. Oh, I like that. Yeah. So let's make it more interesting. So we have these big block chords now just kind of move Kong Kong. Let's let's make them move in a way that is that has line. I don't think that this viola is loud enough, but I want to add stuff to it over here, so we'll get it we'll get it some um, stuff figured out here um this may not work it may work we'll find out oh thanks yeah I, string strings are uh still my favorite What do our violin twos to do through this? I think probably just the melody, right? Probably a big romantic violin section here. Ooh. 
we're going to do a little trick. I'm not sure if I would do this if I was actually, oops, if I was actually writing this out, but it can be helpful to put a little bit of this in to force the samples to sound nice. So to get that really hard attack. Yeah. Okay. Um, so F, um, G, our violas are below the cello here. I don't like that. this be extra spicy maybe like that I don't know if that's gonna read yeah <laughs> that sounds nice all right um I, I would like this to be more than well I don't know we haven't really done a full string statement but maybe we can leave it the way it is Seven here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. What? Get this. Grab this thing. Have this come way for just a second because I think what we're going to do is we're going to keep the string statement going but with this theme we started with which is over here but we're going to make it be a major instead of a minor -y. give it a nice a major since we have this a major chord in 45 let me just do that. I have to move around some notes and some accidentals here. Um, so we want C sharp. Um, we don't want that. We do want this to be sharp. That's gonna sound interesting. I might might make that F not sharp here. Okay, so this should be like a sort of A A E A E. <laughs> that sounds funny. A ish version, A major ish version. We're gonna keep this kind of same texture from over here from this little forty statement. Forty three or it has a little static, I think. Mixolydian. Okay, hold on. All right, counter melody. Uh, 
Come on. Hold on. I'm getting ahead of myself. Make sure I can read that. Oh, come on. Do you know what that is? Bum, 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 bum. There we go. Getting a little excited. Uh, that, that, that. Hold on. No, not this one. I think that's how much time I have left. Yes, I think that's going to need to be. Ah, he really hates ledger lines. It really just likes electric lines. Come on, it also hates my flags. There we go. I'm trying to go too fast, that's part of the problem. See how that sounds. This is an opportunity to then have this do the same thing, but an octave lower. To go into the big string octaves thing, you always hear bum 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 bum. Well, let me do some Boeing. Da 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 da. Bum 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 bum. Da 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 da. I think that's how it. Ooh. Putting in slurs also can sometimes be a little fraught. You gotta make sure you do it on the right side or else it tries to turn it into 16th. Okay. Yeah, unfortunately not. Yes. Okay. Um... Some things. Oops. Remember what I said about the slurs? There we go. Um, we gotta put some slurs in here. Ba -da -ba -ba, ba -ba -ba. That's fine. Um, I actually don't want this harp thing that I copied. It's got a very pastoral feel. Um, violas. Let's let's do. Chords first, I think, actually. Let's figure out what chords we can do. Maybe we could do one, two, three, one, two, three, four. One, two, three. Oh, come on. You know what that is. Um, oh, it's going to be like not. 
was gonna have this this G here. I was gonna have this G sharp be a, uh, a, a E E flipped over uh, inverted E a E six three, but I, I don't think it's gonna work. Um, I think it's gonna have to be D. We could do it here, although the closest thing is the root again. I guess we could do it. Um, we're gonna do. We're gonna pull Morton Lawrence and do a bunch of first inversion chords here because that's really nice. Yeah, let's get these chords filled out. Because right now it sounds like yeah, G sharp minor and C sharp minor, but that's not what it's going to sound like eventually. Um, maybe if we did like a motion like bum, 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 bum. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and now it will sound like um, the right thing. Uh, okay, violas. I think we're just going to have them hold an E through this whole thing. Okay, now we can go to kind of more traditional viola, viola things. Um, actually, it's just going to hold an A through this. Well, no. It's going to go down to the... Well, we already have a third up there. We don't need another third. It can go down to a D. Um... Okay, so this needs to sound, this needs to have a root in it, so that's going to be E, and then E. <laughs> Doing the E thing again, right? Is that right? Let's see. Oh, I'll start back in. Bye, Carson! Okay, let's change chords with this. Um, hold on. Get a piano. Let's load up Logic. This may uh, cause the screen to be a little weird for a second while I just get this Logic project loaded. We'll say I just want a piano so I can test some things. Mm-hmm. Like I said. Maybe weird for a second. Get your screen back there. Let me get my back here. Okay, so we're going. Yeah. Yes. That is what we will do. So it is um Okay, so it's like, I actually should be, uh, sorry, so much thinking, um, I think it's this, um, so that would be F sharp, E, 
and that would be A, A, so just an A. least B minor or no B minor for the last two of this so B F sharp and back up to D will that work uh, that's gonna be too many thirds Actually, this can stay, this can move up, this can move down, for the whole measure. And that beat grouping is wrong, but I kind of don't care. Will that work? <laughs> Yeah, we can kind of bring these down. That was easy at the end. No. See, the handwriting is pretty good, but it, just every once in a while you do something and you're like, hey, that really looked like something else. All right, let's listen to the whole thing. These two measures are like absolutely transcendent. I really like them, if I do say so myself. There's some bowing here that's wrong. Like this should probably be, this is all one phrase. This should probably all be bowed together. Oops, let's redraw it easier. Okay.
drop the reins? I'd like to repeat the beginning here, I think. A little bit of this, just a little bit. Maybe up to the maybe up to the three, four. With some we'll we'll make some changes to it, I think. I think. I'm not a hundred percent sure I actually want to do this, but and let's go back to odd tempo here as well. Lunch is a thing. I love how my iPad says it's 9.41. It's not 9.41 Mountain Time. Okay, so this time I think we could have something a little more honky. What about... Beautiful Goose. I think it does that because it's in, it's in demo mode.
can't bow a trombone. I mean, I guess you could. I don't think you'd be very successful in getting sound out of it. <laughs> Five minutes and 30 seconds of music, that's quite a lot. I mean, it's slow and kind of simple, but... I was thinking about filling things out. Are there places where we could use a little bit more of something? Is this too low for a regular old flute? Probably not, but... Okay, the little call, the little response is a little, just a little too muddy. But what if we did it, like, here? We haven't used oboes at all. Also, will always show 100% battery because it's in demo mode. A little swell into this might be nice to sort of make that transition a little less awful. Something like. that perhaps here so it's e to it's e major to b flat major and it's on three and four
mess up now, I think. I just repeat that pattern. Um, maybe to F here, like a build. I'm not sure that's going to work. No. Timpani is pitched. It's not bad. That's not bad. It's just there's it needs to stop. That really does give it a little bit more color through there, and then we'll. So, for some reason, every engraving program in the world, except for like you know the high end ones like Sibelius and Darko, just do not support Subido Dynamics. So this may sound a little weird. <laughs> You know, we might be able to just go to F there so we really hear that bong. Let's try good old B-flat clarinets. It goes pretty low there, but I think that'll just pop them down into that lovely shallow mill register that will make it work. And I think for these, we could just do, let's try bassoons. I'm, I'm not sure we need them, but it might be nice to thicken that up here too. are crossing because of base notation but we could do maybe second to get grab some dynamics what are we at here for these guys um mezzo piano i think they're already at mezzo piano but let's be sure i think we'll wait to bring the second bassoon until there because it doesn't make sense for it to try to do those really low a's
Maybe an oboe with this. It goes a little bit low, but I don't think into honk range, into the range of the honk. That sound like by itself. Ooh. That warms the heart. I would just like to point out. So, for, well, for those of you. Good, I'm glad, yeah. Two things happening here that I think are really nice. One is that, so from a suggestion, some little tricks that I've learned. Let's say you have a melody, right? It goes like this. Yeah, totally wrote that myself. So let's put some chords to it, right? Like A major. Okay. Pretty, okay. It's okay. First of all, it's stepwise motion. So instead of going from A to D, go from A to D, 6, 4, where you just move the top two notes up and you play the inverted one. And then as you're walking back down, Uh, just trying to use inversions to keep the chords from being that big blocky, like just chunk, 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 chunk. The second thing is, Morton Lawrenson does this. If you take all the chords and you invert them and you play them in their inverted state, where their uh, their first inversion, sorry, the first inversion state, you get this beautiful, like light and airy sound because um, a chord. So let's do let's do it in staff pad here. Hold on. Let's go to. Um... Yeah, so SATV piano. So let's say you have a chord. Let's say you have a chord like uh, C major, right? That's C major. It's just three notes. You can invert that chord by taking the bottom note and moving it up an octave. Okay? That's called C first inversion. Okay? So this is, uh, this is root position. This is first inversion. Um, if you do it again, oops, I need to get out of the scribble mode. If you do it again, you could take the bottom note, move it up an octave, and that is second inversion. Now, if I do this again, we end up back in root position. So there's only really as many inversions, or versions of a chord as there are notes, right? There's three notes, so there's three inversions. You've heard this a million times. Okay. What Morton Lawrenson will do is he will take a chord progression and he will try his utmost 
to always have chords be in first inversion. So let's let's write a quick little melody. So a melody. Okay, let's do a Morton Lawrence and chord progression underneath. So we're gonna do C major to begin. So what do we want in C major? We want E on the bottom. So we know we're gonna have E on the bottom. And let's let's move it. Um, Let's do it like that. Let's do um, let's do an A minor chord in the second half of the measure. Okay, so we know where we want those these two notes in the bass E and C because those are the thirds of those two chords. Okay, so then your tenors can probably just hang out on the fifth. Um, maybe go up to the root here. Probably you'd want them to go. Yeah, let's have them go up to, uh, so we're gonna have C here. It's a lot easier with the keyboard. So what we should have is that same, that idea. Okay. Um, so probably in this measure, we're gonna want, this next measure, we're gonna want a G chord, right? But we, again, we wanna use a, Uh, the version of it that is in inversion. And remember, our tenors are an octave down. See this little, this little eight over here. Um, this little eight right there means that all their notes are 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 written an octave higher than they sound. So what we should have is now we should have this sound, and they're all in first inversion. You know, I didn't, I kind of love it though. We'll, we'll, we'll say that for later. Oop, sorry, I've got my scribbles on. Let's see what that sounds like. Okay, let's do a plagal cadence right here. So we're probably gonna want F. We'll just go. Nope. F. F. Bum, bum. Bum. Okay, so we're going to want an F major. Probably we want F in the, we want lots of Fs. Remember, don't, don't double thirds. It makes the chords sound bad. And for the ending, we can, we can come back to root position. So what you should have is a nice, That's just a silly example. What you get with that is it's just this really floaty, ethereal sound. You know, um, we keep this like, um, um, like Magnum Mysterium and uh, his, uh, his, uh, those French ones, the French poems by Rocca, uh, he, it are just like transcendent. And that's all that is doing that, it's giving it that, that beautiful texture. It's just this beautiful, um, well, yeah, all the, 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 what makes it sound like it's in first inversion, just untangled, is that the lowest note is the third of the chord, right? Um, you can get into huge trouble. So, for example, this right here is probably not great uh, because there are two E's. This is an E and this is an E. 
and then we have a C and a G. So what you have is the third of the chord in two places, the root of the chord, and the fifth of the chord. Um, notice how there's two thirds. That's very bad. Um, you really don't want to double thirds. You want to, you want to double roots. That's what you want to have more than one of. Um, so like, that's why the beginning of this. So probably if we were going to do this again, if we we're going to fix this. We would move this down, have this very first chord be, uh, in root position. See, now we have a C here. So we have two roots. Um, also, you get this nice thing where the bases don't have to move there. Uh, there's actually a double third here, too. So it's really easy doing this to uh, end up with double thirds because uh, typically I, when I look at A, I say, oh, that's a third of an F chord. We should probably put, it, put an F major chord here. Um, and it's bad. <laughs> it's not good. So, um, yeah. Anyway, that's a fun trick is to try to use uh, first inversion chords as much as possible by putting the third in the root. Um, I think this is the one I was looking at. Yeah. Uh, and that's how you get this really sort of transparent sound. It's really delicate. We're doing it here very much. And actually, in 46. 47 These are all root position chords. They're all very stable. Well, actually, 48 is starting. Try to think of the the biggest thing is to think of as much as possible of when I write on this. I'm gonna scribble again. Uh, is to think of your lines as as primarily horizontal things. Uh, music sounds best, especially music for orchestra and choir and stuff, um, when it sounds like this. Lots of layered horizontal lines. like that, rather than this. This is what you often get. You might have like a melody on top, right? This is sort of my abstract. That's the melody right here. And then maybe below it, what you get is big giant block chords and they all move together. They all move up, they all move down. But notice in this version that we did over here, this thing, um, you know, sometimes this one's moving up while this one's moving up while this one's moving down, right? Um, the more you can have these notions of four independent voices that are kind of moving along and they're doing their own thing. And then that from that sort of arises and emerges um, harmony, the better that the more smooth and lovely things are going to sound. I'm sorry, I don't know why I kept pushing that over and over again. Um, so again, four different voices, especially in string writing. This is why even when I work in my DAW, even when I work in my DAW, I program my strings like this. I program them in all four voices so that I can try as much as possible to have those four independent lines that are moving and, and you know, doing stuff like this, right? But, right, if we were to look at this from from the perspective of what I just talked about, like if you think about what this line is doing, right, it's doing this. This one's going down and up and down and up and up and down. This one's staying relatively static. Then it's making a little jump there. This one's staying static at the beginning. Then it's walking up here. 
This one is staying mostly static. It's doing these little jumps to sort of give it a thing. This is this measure is really a pedal uh, measure on A. Uh, and then we have this this thing, and it's again it's staying kind of it's just kind of doing block chords. But then we have you know you can do block chords again. Block chords aren't bad. Notice that when we do the block chords, we have again something moving. Uh, this is why earlier when I was talking about this measure right here. This measure kind of sucks. 43. It needs help. Because everything is kind of static. So where can we put some motion in? Let's put some motion in in the viola. Uh, what is our viola doing? It's currently holding a, a G. So let's just kind of just have it walk around. Kind of walk around that G. Da da da. Um... Uh, let's have it jump up to an E there, right? So then what you're going to get is that this little moment right here is going to be really lovely because it's going to poke out and it's going to fill up that space. And it's, it, it's subtle, right? It doesn't, it doesn't quite pop out as much as I'd like. What you would really want to do probably is let's put it probably a one measure or one phrase is you probably want to do like this kind of a thing. Yeah, see how that just, that just adds a little bit of interest so that that measure isn't just a static moment. So these two are moving, the new ones get hello. Little lines that That's how, as they go, the motion slowly removes itself until we're left with just one single note. Anyway, that's a tip. This is this is how you should think about especially strings, string lines. All lines should really be thought of like this because you'll just end up with more. But it's also okay to have some static stuff, right? Like again, we're having this is a pedal tone right down here. Oops. Why did that oh, because I <laughs> I grabbed this measure. This measure is comically huge now. Um this is just a pedal tone. Um, we just are trying to emphasize the sevenness. One, two, three, four, five, six. Seven. It's okay to have similar motions sometimes. These guys are just in thirds, right? see people say like always contrary motion or I don't say that I often see people talking about contrary motion as a really great composition tool uh, and uh, sorry what I see people sometimes do after they see the contrary motion talk is to try to write everything in contrary, contrary motion it's not absolute motion contrary motion is just something that can add interest to something, right? Um, um, let's let's do a four-part corral. Hopefully, this is useful to somebody. Let's go back. Actually, let's just go back to that. Let's just go back to that. Uh, this thing, right? Um, let's write a little melody. Um, Uh, sorry. Um, okay. So let's go C, G. Uh, actually, let's not dot that. Let's go C, G, 
A, B, so that should be Do, So, Ba, Ba, Do, So, Do, T, Da, Ba, Ba, Ba. So here's a melody. Uh, let's just do another version of this. Okay, easy. Four, four, four. It's not the best melody in the world, but. Okay, so we essentially have two phrases, A phrase, B phrase, okay? Now let's think about it. What chords do we want to do this? So we have C, G, A, B. Um, the A, Bs are really, uh, they could sort of be passing tones. Let's um, let's just sketch out a, a simple, just root position bass line. Just walk down, see how that sounds. So again, two two phrases, this phrase, this phrase. Um, okay. Um, what's good about this? So normally, what I would do is I would think about these chords as like one chord, which is C, five chord, which is G. We're just in C major here, A minor um g major this is probably going to be a c63 g okay um so what chord tone uh members do we have we have the root here this is the third this is the root root third root root so a lot of roots because it's the base it's okay to have lots of root in the base um, so we we have a C chord. What chord? What tones are we missing? Well, we're missing a third. So right now this is C, but it could be C minor, right? What is that? Is it C major or minor? You have no idea. It's not until I have a third that you know what it is. This is pretty solidly in C major, especially given this this leading tone right here. So let's uh, let's get a third in there somewhere. I think that we could probably go. We probably put a third in the tenors. Now I'm going to do it as a quarter because I want it to move. I want it to go somewhere. So let's have it go to the next chord. Well, so we could have it go to a G, but we probably don't want to do that because right away we see C to G. We don't want to necessarily mirror that perfectly, right? So what I'm going to have this do is it's going to move in similar motion, but it's going to go to a different chord member so that as that goes up, um, it goes somewhere interesting. Now what we can do is we can then say, okay, we're on a, at a G chord. So this is holding a G up here. This is a G up here. So we already have a doubled root. We probably need a third somewhere and there's probably going to be a D here because there's not a lot of room for our, uh, altos at the moment. So that leaves us with one chord tone, which is a B. And if we did that, we would get a nice stepwise motion down here. Okay. Um, let's fill out our alto voice. So we've got, it's probably going to start on a, let's have him be, let's have her, them be on a C and then a D here. Um, I'll try to look up if anybody has questions. So what does that get us? It gets us this. Okay. I made a mistake here. Probably everyone was yelling. This 
is a third, and this is a third too, so we don't want to do that. Let's get rid of that. Let's have it go. So now our tenor one's a little awkward. That's not terrible. Probably sounds better. Okay. So now let's walk. Always try to do stepwise motion if possible. So let's walk our alphas up one to E. And then let's put in a, uh, let's make this a uh, suspended chord. Um, for A minor, we can probably have our, our uh, tenors go to A because that will give us a nice big... Which, again, doubled root in the bottom, doubled root here, fifth, third. So we only have one third. You don't actually need a fifth on a chord, by the way. Fun fact. And that leaves us with not a lot to do here, except for maybe um, put a fifth in the tenors. Um, that we know this is going to be a C, C, this can probably just do an F. We can do another suspended chord here. Uh, double the root. So that's what that sounds like. It's a little fast, obviously, for that kind of moment. Heard a 60 beats per minute. That's probably too slow. All right. Let's do it again. So yeah, so that that's so let's take a look. Let's let's get rid of all of my gobbledygook here. Um, let's take a look at the, where the motion is. That sounds okay. I think it's a little muddy in places. I can't, it's hard to tell if that's the sample or the or the uh, writing, but we're missing some slurs. But let's take a look. So similar motion. Similar motion, contrary motion. Um, that's very down. That's also very down. So similar, but kind of in a different way. Down, down. So there's a lot of similar motion in this measure. That's probably not fantastic. This one kind of has a, a scoop. While these move slowly up and this one stays static. Um, and then we just kind of end together on that with the suspension here. Um, so that's kind of what you end up with. Uh, probably, probably, oh, you know why? Okay, here's why this measure is terrible. Probably somebody spotted it already. Two fifths? Two fifths? Fifth? Fifth? No. Two roots. Yes. Two fifths. Two roots. Watch it. See if that makes it sound as muddy. Sounds so much better. See? Uh, yeah, you don't actually need the fifth of the chord. It's actually the least... Uh, you can actually imply the fifth. So... Let's take a look at this. Let me get rid of all my gobbledygook. I can show you what, what that means. Um, where's a good place for this? Let's see if there, there might not be something in here that's good for this, but... Um, okay, so for example, this C chord right here... Um, 
which has no third. Oh no, it does have a third. Okay, so this C chord here. It's kind of weird because we have these 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 non-chord tones up here. But let's so let's just look at the bottom part where the square is. So we have C, G, E. Okay, so inverted C chord. I could lose this G entirely and it would still sound like a C inversion. So let's just drop it out. Let's just put rests there. Notice you you still hear a C inverted there. You still, you, you've implied the C. The C is implied because you have the root, um, the root and the third only. Uh, you still hear C majorness here. Um, sorry. Uh, C majorness here, moving to the F chord. Uh, because both the motion and the just the fact that there is an E and a C, or sorry, an E and a C. In fact, I'm moving from C and I'm currently playing the piano. I'm playing E, C, and I'm moving to F, A. So there are no fifths in either of those. Sort of out of context, you don't hear a chord, but in the context of music, you know. The chord just works. The chord, the chord is implied. So you don't actually always need a fifth. It's good to have because it sound it makes things sound correct and full. Okay. Sounds good, but sounds better. Um but you don't actually need the fifth. It's the least quote unquote important chord member. So the way to think about chord members is if if you have like, say, let's let's go back over here. So we had root position chord, right? It has all the members of the chord. It has the root, the third, and the fifth. The root you can think about as the most important. It is the thing that gives the chord its identity. Without a root, you will hear a different chord, right? You will hear some other tonality. The third, I'm going to try and draw a chili pepper, okay? The third is like the spice. It gives the chord its flavor, okay? It makes it major, it makes it minor. But just like spice in food, you can have too many thirds very easily, right? If I take a C major chord and I double the third, so now I'm playing it in inversion, but I'm also playing a third on the top. It doesn't sound quite right. Everything sounds thin and bizarre and doesn't sound correct. So you always want to double the root. Never double the third unless you're like quadrupling the root, right? You always want to have more roots than thirds. If I have two C's and an E, everything sounds great. If I have two E's and a C, it sounds kind of kind of weird. It doesn't sound right. Um, and then the fifth is like a filler. The fifth is what makes the chord sound complete, right? So the chord can exist and you can apply the same tonality without the fifth, but it sounds more full. So. Right? That sounds like C major, but it sounds a lot more full and thick with the fifth in there, right? Um, same thing again. The fifth really keeps everything full. So what I'm doing there is, so if you take the, the C and you put it on the very bottom, so here's a C, and then a G, and then an E, oops. Why are you being stupid? Uh, you would never do this, right? Because there's a double third, but um, right. All I've done is I've moved the third from. All I've done here is I've moved the third up, um, out of the chord so that it's a little wider, spaced out. Um. So yeah, 
that's how you think about chord tones is the root is the foundation is the most important it's the thing that needs to be doubled if possible tripled if possible like you can quadruple um this is a cool exercise sit down piano play all the a's that exist on the whole piano play one c sharp A major, right? Um, so don't don't double the third or fifth on the same beat. Try not to do them in the tonality at all, if possible. Now that's not always possible. There's some, and but doubling the fifth doesn't always sound bad. It sounds kind of weak. Doubling the third really can sound bad. It can really make things sound not correct. Um, that is the one that I would say really try to avoid. You know, I, I was talking with, uh, I can't remember who it was about how, like, I always get all these like people who send me things and they're like, Hey, what's wrong with this? Why doesn't it sound right? And I look through their harmony and there's like tripled or quadrupled thirds everywhere. And it's like, well, voice your chords a little better in, in that you want to have more roots, um, less thirds and more fifths. Now, remember, sometimes you have a melody on top of chords. Like a lot of times we think about music for better or for worse as a melody plus chords. Not always a, the most perfect way to think about it, but it's it's good to think about like sort of the the to the harmony as like a a structure that holds up this melody, right? That holds it up. Um and it, and then it gives it flavor and it gives it life. Um and so sometimes there will be a note, a chord tone in the melody, and you just, it, it, you know, through a passing tone or something, it, it, like you end up doubling thirds or fifths. That's okay. Really, if you want to understand how to write really, really nice multiple line things, much better than what I wrote here, much, much better, uh, just go to imslp.org, uh, Inter uh, International Music Score Library Project, IMSLP. And look up bot corrals, okay? He'll have, there'll probably be hundreds of them. I think there's like a hundred and some odd bot corrals, and they all have really nice voice leading. And they show you step by step how, you know, if you listen to the to the recording with the score in front of you, uh, or play through it on the piano, um, you can see you can see how it, how it's nice to move. It's important to remember that not all rules that you learn like this are. Um, are, are their suggestions they're like guidelines right um here's a good example uh let me see if i can do this without giving it away um Anybody want to know what I'm doing? Anybody know what this is? Anybody know what this is? When I play it, you'll know. Yeah, it, it exactly just untangled. It's the same, right? Everything goes up together. Everything comes down together. But you know what? It works. And it's the foundation of like whole parts of Halo. It's the um, sort of, it, you see it a lot, I hear it a lot with Cortana. Um, um and it's all the same motion so in that scenario it works you know one of the things you see in this is 
The relationship here is a fifth between this note and this note. This is also a fifth. This is also a fifth. As is this. These, these are fifths. All of these are fifths. And they're just moving together. Um, again, I just was talking about how, like, avoid that if you can. In this case, it works, right? Uh, and if you look at Bach Chorales, one of the things you see is that he'll never, ever, 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 ever do this. There will never be what's called parallel fifths. This is what the bottom two voices sound like in this. It feels like this got this hollow, you know, not super full sound. Um, but when you add the thirds, sorry, that's the wrong chords. It fills out. Now, here's the thing you can do to make this even better. If I take this line and I copy it up here, and I just move these down a third. Oop, do I still have? Yeah, I'm still scribbling. Ah. I move these down a third. What has happened here? What has been done? By moving this up here, which was down on the third voice, what have I done? Doubled the root. It will sound much more full now. Sounds really good. Um, end of, uh, this is the end of the, uh, 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 the best place you can see this is at the end of the um, Discover Hope trailer. Score of which I actually have here somewhere. And I think that the way we did it, let me just look at the cue here. I think at the end there, the strings actually have quadrupled roots or tripled roots. One, two, they have doubled root, the tripled roots. Yeah. Um, tripled roots. Same key, tripled roots. So, anyway, it's cool. It's cool to keep your scores around. If you look at the end of the Discover Hope trailer, it's basically just this in the strings. So, um, actually, you know what? We could probably show it. Should we, sh should we show it? Should we show a real world example? If anyone's bored by this, we can stop. <laughs> Let me find it. Make sure that the that this is part. Let me make sure this is coming through the Yeah it is. Okay. So end of the Discover Hope trailer. Uh sorry. Get rid of my face for a second. So end of the Discover Hope trailer. So there's some flute things. Same thing you just heard. I chose you because you were special. And then it adds a third on top. I knew we would be perfect together. And I was right. So yeah, that's a good example of something that's like a real world thing. It's basically just that. It's basically just this. Um, it's got tripled roots like this. This D here is double. Uh, this D is actually, there's a D down here and an F here and an A here and a G here. But then it's all the same chords and it's all in, in parallel motion. So that's a great example of like when someone tells you a rule, like keep, keep it in mind, like you have to... Um, Hold it really tight, right? Now hold that 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 advice really tight, but I'll, or um, not hold it really tight. You have to strongly believe in it, but hold it loosely because sometimes it's that bungee thing. Uh, what do they say? They always say uh, strong ideas loosely held, right? Like that's the idea. Is that sometimes in art, especially in any kind of art, this thing that you consider a rule um, is 
just a, it's just a guideline. Most of the time that's true. But there are times when it works to do this other thing. And I'll be honest, like I didn't I didn't write this. This is not by me. This is by Marty, right? And Mike. They they're the ones who came up with this. Um so and that's a great example of like doing something that breaks the rules, but it works. Now, I want to point out that the rule is still good, right? The rule is still a good general guideline, but they broke it with intention, right? There was a they understood what the rule was first, then they broke it. That's what that's what I always tell people, especially in music, is that like the rules are good to know because if you're going to break them, you want to break them for a reason because you chose to break them. I want to break this rule because of this thing that I am doing, right? Um, uh, if you're breaking rules unintentionally, you're not really making choices. You're just... You're just doing, you're just kind of doing a thing, right? So anyway, well, that was a fun little lesson. That was cool. I'll try to put more of these in there. I'm going to put this uh, stream on YouTube, I think, um, because I think this was a valuable little look at like some cool, some cool, hopefully neat um, voice leading tips, I guess. Um, yeah. You know, also another thing to think about, you know, what else makes that phrase work? Dynamics, right? It swells up and comes down. Yeah. <laughs> An oboe playing a third equals a beautiful goosey pepper. It's true. It's true. Well, the beautiful goose is a is a English horn, not not an oboe. Um this is very similar but just slightly different instrument. <laughs> Um, but yeah, chili peppers. Think of your thirds as chili peppers. They, they spice the dish up, they spice your cord up, but they are so easy to overdo. It's easy to make your cord too spicy. It's easy to make it too, um, too spicy. Here's a good, uh, you want to hear a nice little piece? I've been working on this for a while. This is a setting of text from a Laura Ingalls Wilder book. the text written in with my scribbles, so sorry, I can't read it. We'll just acquire in strings on the screen here. is very close to a no sorry I can myself yeah it's it's very similar 
sometimes called English horn, korangahe. Here's a good example. Parallel writing, right? And moving together. But then, watch. Count collapses down. do subito piano. Yeah, I need to finish putting the text in here. I think there's a couple of places that just need a little bit of looks, but that one's pretty good. I probably won't put the lyrics in until I put it in a Dorico, but yeah, it's things I've been working on. What other stuff is in here? Anything good? Eh, I don't think so. All right, well, let's listen to what we worked on today because we're getting close to two hours. I think I hear my kid coming home, so let's wrap it up by listening to what we did today. Oh, hello. Maybe I'll stay on a little bit longer for him. I'm Saros. I feel like you always get on right as I'm getting off, so maybe I'll extend it a little today. Actually, you know what we'll do? I'll go through one of the string quartets from the upcoming album after we listen to this.
trains. So my scribblings on it. Yes, AP Moss. That is exactly like right here. This was not pits before. Also, like any articulations, right? Like um, staccato, legato, like it'll just it just does them for you. And they're all programmed much better than I would program them, um, even manually. Why did I circle this? There's our beautiful goose. The big difference between an oboe and a cor anglais, AP Moss, is that down here, like especially below the staff, uh, uh, English horn will sound much less, um, uh, the best word I can come with, hearty, uh, but less honk, honk, too much honk. Like it's honk is beautiful instead of, you know, an oboe when it gets honky, it gets pretty. And it sounds nice in the register, and it probably starts to sound pinched and easily. It's like an alto. Kind of like an alto. Sort of. A lot of people will write push horn and use it instead of oboe because they like the tone better. I know Gareth Coburn, I think Gareth Coburn does that. Like, whenever he wants to use oboe, he usually does push horn. Yeah, that's something pretty good. All right, let's uh, preview the string quartet from the upcoming album, shall we? I think that would be nice. Give me just a second to get it all loaded up. Yeah, this iPad is so hot. Oh. Okay, this may kill uh, kill OBS. Last time I had like screen sharing going with the iPad, it like destroyed it. Okay, it's not going to destroy it yet. Oops, no this that okay yeah that's sounding okay um i'm not sure what oh, what i would do with it but it was fun to work on today all right let's load up a i'm just gonna switch you guys you all sorry not you guys you all okay you're on that one okay good yeah don't save it um hmm should we listen to Let's listen to Serene Gravities. A little of the score here. Hold on, that's the logic score. We don't care about that. Let me get the real nice score that I gave to the actual musicians. It's not actually called Equinox. I'm calling it Serene Gravities now, but Let's listen. Make sure this is coming through.
Yeah, it's in a pretty good spot. I'm liking the way that's sounding. Should we listen to another one from the String Quartet's album? Uh... That's such a nice recording from them. I did that through uh, Musiversal, so that's the... Uh, um, let me get the score up here. I'm expecting that one I just played to be the the most popular on there because I think it's the it sounds a lot like it. it reminds me a lot of um that one that's in Arrival. Um, this one's fun. Uh, where is the? I'm not sure the editing on this one is quite there yet, so give me just a second. It might it might not sound good. Okay. Right.
That's sounding pretty good. Anyway, so I have a bunch of those. Let's see, I have, I think, six of those. Yeah, six. I'm hoping to get an album together for them. I've been editing them. I edit them myself, which is bad. I should hire someone, but I just, yeah. Um, we'll do one more. Can we do one more? This one also has the wrong name, by the way. Oh no, those are the stems. Here's one more. This one's now called Winsome Vortices, not Chorus Nevis. I didn't like that name. It, it was just a temporary name. I, I don't like Woodhenge for the other one either. I think it was a better name. Um, uh, that's the session data. Where's the edit? I should make sure these open on the new machine. I've been editing them on the old one. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He clicks not available. Whatever. Um. Okay. Here's here's another one. Maybe we'll do them all. Maybe I'll just show them all off. I don't know. They they're, they're not all finished yet. The editing. I still need to edit them. I can still sometimes hear, you know, the crossfade when I switch to a different take, but.
So that's that one. I'm just playing them all. I feel like playing them all today. Might talk over them so that you have to listen to them on Spotify to get the version without my hideous voice in them. <laughs> uh, this is not the order that they are in on the on the album either. At least not so far. Oh, that's the wrong PDF. Let me hit correct PDF. This one I really like. I think I've played this one on stream before. Hey, look. 5 4. Who could have who could have guessed that I would write something in five? Um, where is my edit? Um what was it the take? That's the take folders. Oh, there it is, the editing. This is helpful too, because I can open them in uh logic on the new computer and see what what doesn't open all right i did not edit this one in the correct way either so it's a little bit because uh so this one was not recorded to click the other ones were recorded to click this one i wanted to be extremely organic sounding these temple markings you see are very much suggestions so we did we we sort of rehearsed it and then we recorded it without click so my edit is a little weird um but I think it's actually in a good spot. So let's see how it sounds.
Yeah, that one ended up really nice. I really like it without the click. It makes it makes recording so much more organic and natural. Um, it's such a pain to edit. <laughs> it's more to edit them. Um, in the end. Um, but it's but it's worth it. Um, here's a seven eight one. We'll do another one. It is in asymmetrical meter. I needed to rename this one. I don't like the name. That's just like the only thing I come up with. It's it was kind of like loosely loosely inspired by um, the Rite of Spring, hence the name. But that's just for my my own internal name, I guess. I need to come up with a new name. So if anybody has a great good idea for a name for this one, let me know. <coughs> Excuse me. Yes, 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 yes. I have some D clickers on these. This one may also have quite a bit of um, quite a bit. You may notice a lot of edits because this one has been hard to come together. This is slightly. This is a different string quartet. Do you have these for your tracks in the future? Oh, you mean the score? Uh, the the uh, if you're talking about the score, no, because those were all done in a DAW. Those are all done in the box. So this is the only one I've done recently that's actually recorded. So anyway, if anybody has a good idea for the name for this one, let me know.
sounds getting there. Hey, there's some, some sort of weird distortion or clipping. Why do I have a declipper in here? Eh, whatever. To figure out why that is. See, the big the big thing that keeps me from getting this out of the door is that I, I have to edit it, and I hate doing audio editing so much. But, uh... But, yeah, let's see. What else? We've listened to that one, we've listened to that one, that one, that one, that one. Oh, there's only one left. Okay, last one. Uh, this is by the same quartet that did the last one. It's from Budapest. All the other ones were from England, were, uh, Brookspear Music Quartet. This one is just, I think they're just a bunch of people from the orchestra there. I think that's the wrong. Oh, nope, I need the edit. This one kind of almost has like a spectral music feel. All right. Uh, no sound is coming out of my... Uh... Maybe we will not be listening to at least not through this. Why is that not playing through? Um, I'm not sure why we're not getting audio here. Hold on. Um, I may have just lost my. Hold on, because I still see. Can you guys still hear me? I I I still see audio coming through OBS. Give me just a second. Some I've had this happen before. What did I do to fix it? Oh, good. I'm glad you hear me still. Hold on, let me see if I can figure this one out. It's actually like showing it as going out stereo out in uh, Logic. Let me see. Does this work? Yes. Yep, that's all working. Okay. Why is that one particular logic? Maybe it was just that because I didn't close logic. Let's try it again. This is very odd. If you look at logic, Everything, you can see audio down here. I don't know why it's not going out the bus. Yes, it's going here. Oh, I don't see anything coming out the bus. Here. Um, ah, that's why. My fab filter. Bet you it works now. Yep. I haven't authorized fab filter yet on this machine. That's why. Okay. Oops, sorry.
little more dissonant than some of the other ones. The idea for that one is it's kind of got this like so at the beginning everybody's is like a story of dynamics, right? Like everybody at the beginning their dynamics are very offset. So you're getting all these different little things poking out of these kind of a little bit more dissonant chords, right? Uh, and then they all kind of come together at 10 here and then they come back and then the next time they play it all their dynamics match. So as they come out, you know, they're, they're all together on their dynamics. They all slowly move up to that chord. Same same material moving up to this big thing. Then we have this sort of middle section with this little three against two thing that's sort of meant as kind of like almost like a little little uh, little bridge into one last time where we do the same material that we did before. So three times. But this time, instead of a story of dynamics, you literally it's a story of of the actual chords themselves just at a very hushed volume that does not move up and then kind of we get this last set of chords that we had over at 22 and 23 that sort of bring us out so that was the idea behind it um the edit is needs work there i can definitely hear the seams in it so uh this is the one that i that i recorded last so i've, I've done the least work on the on the edit i've got some some tools in my back pocket to like make this transition the the, the current take that I'm using here at 29 is muted and you can really really hear you can really hear the edit because they changed the mutes bye Hippimas where's the edit I like it I think it's it's a nice contrast to a lot of the other stuff Yeah, you really can hear the scene there because I switched to the Consordino version, uh, but I can fix it pretty easily. I just haven't. Again, the problem is that it takes me getting my uh, butt off the off my uh, out of my composition chair and into my audio editor chair. <laughs> so, anyway, that's a little look at the string quartet album. That's probably coming out. I would say early. Hopefully early early summer. Um, I need a name for the album, and I need a name for a couple of the tracks. I want to change the name of Woodhenge, uh, which was the one that sounded the uh, sort of like this. Uh, it was one that was like that. Da 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 da. All the had all the uh, this one. Uh, bunny ba ba bum bum, and then had the bum 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 bum. So I need a better name for this one. Um, Originally, all of them were kind of named after like seasonal ideas, like that one named Anthocyanin. Anthocyanin is the thing that the trees release that causes their leaves to change in the fall. That's why Anthocyanin. I don't know if I love that as a name. It fits, but it, it but that was kind of the idea. And then uh, the there was winds and vortices was once about was once kind of snow cores nevis right dance with the snow. Um, and Woodhenge was like, there was like, a, it's like a Stonehenge, right? But it's made of wood. It's about the seasons, you know, it rotates, you know, it has all these different seasonal ideas with it. So anyway, that was the original idea. But then I kind of moved away from that because I like the name Serene Gravity is better for the other, for like Equinox. Stuff like that. So I need to kind of like get the names into a semi-relatable order, which will then lead to an album name, which is the real big blocker. It's like just I've been thinking about this for months and I can't go with a good one. And then I just need to, like I said, finish the audio editing. So all right. Well, I hope everyone had a wonderful time. Um, like I said, I'll probably throw this one on YouTube as it seems like it's a fairly useful thing to have. Uh, to be able to watch again. Um, so if you're watching on YouTube, thank you. If you listen to the whole thing or watch the whole thing on YouTube, I mean, I can't. Amazing. Uh, wonderful. If you were here for the whole stream, thank you. Um, we've had a couple of people dip in and dip out. But anyway, I think I'm going to head out for the day, uh, do some client work. So um, thanks for stopping by. Uh, I appreciate everybody who was here and everybody who was in chat. Uh, AP Moss. Uh, uh, again, I'm so sorry I see your name wrong. Heros. I'm Saros21, Just Untangled, Carson was here. Um, really appreciate everybody. Yeah, it'll be on Spotify. All my albums go out to everything. Uh, Spotify, Apple Music, all that stuff. So uh, it'll even be on YouTube Music. It'll probably show up on my YouTube channel too. So um, yeah, I hope you all have a wonderful day and uh, see you next time. Bye.